If you look at the way certainly symphony orchestras work today, uh, for a long, long time, the basis of the symphony orchestras have been the subscri subscription series. This is financially and artistically the, the, the basis. Is that really what our audience wants today of us? Um, I've certainly seen in Copenhagen a massive decline over the last 15 years of uh, subscription uh, people, people who take subscriptions. I hope it's not because of the way we do the music, but uh, I, think the, um, I think people today want a broader and a quicker view on what music is. We don't think in boxes, or our audience doesn't think in boxes the way we've, they've probably been done uh, for the past 20, uh, 30 years. You know, they, it's not interesting to look in your, into your diary anymore and see, oh, in, in 11 months on a Wednesday night, I'm going to hear Beethoven 5. That could have been in, uh, attractive to a lot of people uh, one or two generations ago. I'm not sure it's equally attractive today. I'm not sure that the way we make our concert programs necessarily accommodates the wishes of our listeners. Overture, concerto, interval, symphony, you know, the standard version. Is that really what our audience wants? And are we telling them that this is so attractive that you should come and listen to it? I've been to, um, you might know this in France, uh, La Folle Journée a couple of times in Nantes, where in a convention center like this, you, they have seven halls, and within a weekend, they perform uh, a lot of works by, based on a subject, say Mozart or Beethoven or French music or whatever, all from, from big operas until uh, little chamber works, but all complete within sessions of 45 to 50 minutes. That attracts a lot of people. More than 100,000 people come there now. It's an event which certainly uh, goes with our society today. Um, that might be one way of doing it. Um, we should certainly see to it that we don't get static and get left behind. Because what, what I hear in our discussion these days is that we, if we're not careful, we're being put into the defensive. We, we have to defend what we have achieved so far. But quite frankly, we have to look ahead. And I think we need to be much more proactive. I think we have to find out which way is, are we going to, to show to our audience and thus to our politicians that this music is absolutely indispensable in our society. I think that's one of the most important things we can do. We have to, to fight against the idea that there is one truth only in life. And music is one of the best possible examples of doing that. I think we have, in our profession, to be careful that we do not label each other, saying we will want the specialized group to do this, we will, this orchestra is the best for Mozart, this is the best for etc., meaning the rest we don't need. I, when I, whenever I conduct, I obviously insist on the, the music that I have inside me to be the way I imagine. But I will defend until the end of my day for a colleague or anybody else to do the music completely differently. Because music is not just one truth. Music is not just one static thing. Music develops all the time. A key experience for me was when I, in 91, January 91, conducted a new production of uh, Don Giovanni in, in Nice. We had six week, eight weeks of rehearsal, one cast, one orchestra, no change, what the luxury. Um, and after the first night, I went home to my hotel, took my remote control, sat, sat down, got my beer out, turned on the television just to relax, and saw the bombardment of uh, Baghdad. Do you remember CNN, the first, the first television war? Two days later, we had the second performance. Same performers, same orchestra, same conductor, same, you know, all the, the ingredients were the same. But the performance was completely, completely different because the world around us had changed because we didn't see the world the way we did two days ago. It was a much, much darker performance or experience for everybody because things have changed. So we have to be careful not to think in static terms, but that things develop all the way. And as I said, you know, let's be careful that we keep this openness about um, the, the, the strength of nonverbal communication. The, the, the frightening thing, of course, is uh, the Taliban the world where music is not allowed because music cannot be controlled. 
and thus we cannot communicate with each other. So the fight must be for this broad perspective of communication between human beings, which is absolutely essential to all of us. Now tonight, you're going to hear, in inverted commas, my orchestra, uh, the, the Radio Kammer Philharmonie of the radio, of uh, the Dutch radio. And yet there you have a prime example of what the problem is today. We, I think, in general, we have never had such a high level of musicians as we have today. Just in my 30 years of conducting, I found that the quality of orchestras has risen sharply. The competition, the, you know, the audition quality and the, the quality of the individual orchestras have never been higher. We have fantastic musicians today, fantastically dedicated musicians today. And yet exactly one of those orchestras which is incredibly well-playing, incredibly dedicated, which you're going to hear tonight, is exactly the one that's going to be or was threatened to be slaughtered. Thanks to your help as well, a lot of you um, got involved in uh, you know, the, the, the pro protests against this cut. Thanks to that, we managed to get more than 100,000 uh, signatures against the closure of this, this barbaric closure of, of the music syndrome. And the Dutch government has so far now said they will give 50% of what they gave before. Now, that is a very smart technique. Uh, this brings the enemy from outside to the inside, right? It's DVD and Empera, um, which is exactly the way politicians should, should, would work, because then the fight is over there. It's not now in my ballroom. But at least it's a first step, and it's a vital step. We have now managed to establish that the music centrum will not be closed. We then have to think, as I just said, are we doing it the way we, we, we should do for, for today and for tomorrow, or should we change differently? That's a discussion that I can only push a bit, but I'm certainly doing it here. But you will find an orchestra with tonight which is very, very much alive, which is very hard performing, which is creating exactly what, what, what we are talking about, no, that is experiencing live music physically at the, this moment. I think that's one of the key things we can tell our audience and I think we should work more and more in attracting our audience to us as much as possible, um, that you have in the concert hall with the classical music, with the serious music, I'm not saying classical music, serious music, um, you have one of the very, very few places in your life where for two hours or the length of the concert, you can actually work with your own emotions. Now, where, where else can you do that? 40 years ago, 50 years ago, it was difficult to hear music. You had to go down to a record shop to buy an LP. You had to turn on your radio to hear music. Today, you have to fight hard not to hear music. There's music around you everywhere, noise, as it were. But that doesn't necessarily mean contact, communication. What, um, what we can offer a human being in today's society is a moment of meditation, um, emotional fitness center, if I may use that word, uh, where you can work with your own uh, emotions, your own thoughts, leaving the rest of the world outside and penetrating into those deep layers I talked about in the beginning of my speech, where you won't, where, where you won't come otherwise. The music will take you there. And that's, I think, is what we can offer our, our audience. The fact that you can be, deeply dig down into yourselves and find thoughts about your life outside of the two hours you spend in your concert hall. So my wish for you for this, these couple of days is to, to sit down, work on how are we going to establish proactively our world in the, in the years to come. Because I think just sitting, which we all can, can do very easily and, and regret the fact that we do not have the support we had three years ago, doesn't really bring us very far. It's a good basis to know where we were, what were, were our ideas. We should not ever leave our ideals. But let's just see how can we, in this society today, which is changing so rapidly, where everybody's putting etiquettes on everybody, how can we offer something quite unique that is the language, the very broad language of music as we have it today? Thank you for listening to me and have a nice conference. See you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.